Deep in the forest of Fangorn, a ultimate battle for Middle Earth is about to be held. Allies have turned on one another, joining sides for wealth and glory. Hey, how's it going, guys? My name is Jackie Fish, and welcome back to some more Total War Rise of Mordor. We are diving in with another glorious 4 vs 4 online battle, and today is going to shape up to be one hell of an engagement as we have massive, massive forces on either side. This is a 4 vs 4 on the Fangorn forest map that is obviously very forest like we have many forces scattered throughout and it should actually make for a very very exciting engagement so over on the blue and yellow side over on this right hand uh, position we do have the forces of the dwarfs from Erebor they are bringing a wealth of Dowie legions helping to support their allies to the left of them we have Dwarven Warriors on the front line, supported by the Iron Guard, some more Erebor Crossbowmen, and then finally the more meaty parts of the line sitting all the way back here with the Dwarven Barrack Guard, some Tomb Wardens, and some more of the Dane's Iron Foot Bodyguard right here. And you'll think you'll be able to spot Dane himself, even though the shrubbery is taking up a lot of the Dwarven body. Over in the center, we were just looking at them. We, oh, actually, that's no, fast for Uruk. So we have the forces of Mordor who have corrupted the dwarves here, marching forward in their legions. I mean, there's something like 3,000 orcs on that side, which is just crazy. But in the center, we have the men of Rohan. Saruman has been able to keep Feodin corrupted, which is going to help him out massively. And then we also have another Uruk player from Mordor over on the extreme left as one of his units of infantry gets absolutely flattened by the Inladris elves who, oh sorry, the Noldrin elves even, who just ripped forward this poor, poor unit of Orc rabble who stands no chance whatsoever, even though we are getting cavalry moving over. But that's a nice couple hundred kills right off the bat. And then over on the red team, we do have an entire army of Noldrin horses, which are the Inladris elves, and they are moving forward in pretty, pretty heavy cavalry, a full mounted uh, elven army which is going to be very hard to deal with as the orcs going to need some rohan to come over and definitely support that because that is scary over in the center we do have an army from gondor so we've got some affiliate rangers uh doing what they do best they have the snake ability or the snipe ability even which allows them to shoot while staying hidden so they'll be able to be putting shots down range and the orcs will not know where the shots are coming from in the center obviously we have more gondorians knights of the silver swan infantry and supporting them over on their flank we do have the uh, elves of the woodland realm uh, again looking absolutely amazing these forest rangers look incredible then on the extreme 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 left hand side we do have an army from dunland these tribesmen have come to aid their friends uh, as they have been offered more money and more wealth and they'll be pushing out and looking to spring this a bit of a trap as the dwarves and and mordor commit in these guys will come flying into the flank so overall a really interesting battle and I think it's going to be very, very hard for the attackers to, uh, I say the attackers, the blue and yellow team, I uh, call this Team Rohan, to really do much because there's so much cavalry on that right flank pinning down. There's a lot of archers, and this is a very good fortified position. Really, the best option that they can do is just rush these guys. The, the forces of Gondor and the elves are really spread out, and they're kind of laid loads of traps. They have cavalry scattered around. And their best plan of action is to bunker down, let the enemy come in bit by bit and pick them off and harass them and really kind of, you know, break apart their formation that way. But yeah, these guys have to kind of just merge in, consolidate their forces as quickly as possible and just collapse in on this whilst covering that flank. And oh my god, we have a lot of horse archers moving out to this right flank. You love to see it uh, as the elven horse archers. Again, this is going to be so annoying for them to deal with. It really, really is. Because these guys will be able to just keep on shooting and harassing and just, yeah, really pinning down the enemy. Luckily, though, this is a very forested map, so not a huge issue. We have actually major cavalry charges as well in the center as the fire arrows come flying in. And we have the mouth of Sauron fighting off against the Knights of the Silver Swan. If you guys have seen any of my videos before, you just know how potent the, uh, the, the mouth of Sauron's... Uh, oh, sorry, yeah serves the eye even at how strong that cavalry unit is. Sorry, I've been recording all day and my mind seemingly is a bit frazzled. Uh, however, uh, hopefully this will not take away from the glorious battle as the trees burn in the distance. Also, really nice lighting for Attila as well for once. 
and arrows from both sides uh, hammering in on this cavalry fight looking just to kind of knock out one another i mean realistically i think this is a great battle for the yellow team because they can commit their spears really effectively even though gondor have been able to get a unit of Pelagir marines here immediately the orcs of mordor have thrown themselves into the back of them don't really know how these guys got around here, but they did. Over on this side as well, we are getting a unit of the Hall Guardians. This is a super expensive unit of cavalry. Uh, sorry, a unit of pole arms being brought into the battle here. And they will tear apart any cavalry on the enemy team. So these Knights of the uh, Servants of the Eye need to be very, very careful as they will rack up kills very quickly. Over on this left-hand side as well, the Gondorian cavalry seemingly just charged in. However, the trap has been sprung. And even though the Dwarves of Erebor are pushing around quite nicely as they fight off against the Gondorians, yeah, that big, big horde. But the thing is, is it going to be long enough? And as you can see, the Dowie are forming up their formation to kind of repel this. And it's going to take a while for the, the Dunland tribesmen to come over. So again, it's all about whether or not they can break these guys or you know if Gondor will break or if they'll stay alive and that's not that's not a good sign having Dane's iron foot sons of the mountain smashing into the back of the Gondorians is going to be a big a big problem for them and they'll need reinforcements or something to quell this because these hammers will just shred through the Gondorian armor like it is a butter so cavalry charges or something to come in here will be very nice. Even the Archer Fire from the Lords of Lasvin uh, would also be a massive help. Just kind of firing in that missile fire would be huge. And realistically, you ideally need some cavalry over here. Because a rear charge of cavalry would be amazing. And we're starting to get some more crossbows being brought over. Again, this will be a beautiful, beautiful shot here just to hammer in some crossbow fire. Cavalry-wise, though, it does seem like the Servants of the Eye have kind of come out on top here. Able to commit in some of their, their other halberds as well. We've got Guards of the Teeth here, uh, supporting him, fighting off, fighting off against the Hall Guardians, which I think for the most part is a fairly decent matchup for both sides. With the Cavalry fairing, but this has allowed the other Cavalry to really come in. And look at that, breaking the Knights of the Silver Swan. Uh, that's going to free up a lot of their horsemen. However, we do have the Dunland Marauders around the back. And continuing to keep the uh, the rest of the Yorks at bay, we do have the entire Elven Cavalry. The Horse Archers coming around harassing. Uh, realistically, though, it might not be a bad idea to send them in. These guys are kind of like pinned down right now because they, they don't want to move because the Cavalry will harass them. So maybe now that there's been a big gap kind of form, just lob the Cavalry in. These guys will take forever to get over here. So now might be the hour that we draw swords together. We also have some of the Knights of the Silver Swan here fighting against the men of Rohan. They're so-called brothers. But both sides will bloody their blades with the swords, shields, and axes they are bringing to bear. And finally, now over on the left-hand side, we do have... Dunland making it over here really slowly though and this is putting so much pressure on the Gondorian line and as you can see it is breaking it can't withstand the amount of pressure from Dane's Iron Foot Guard even being hammered by arrow fire this unit has only lost 10 uh, soldiers and they've got over 100 kills not a bad KDA and the Orcs of Mordor are rushing forward now Dane's been able to secure that and now take on his most hated opponent aka the Elves of the Woodland Realm rest of the army coming in and realistically these guys need to get over here asap dunland need to reinforce this position they could quite easily turn this on their on its head they could flip around the envelopment that is withstanding gondor oh and we're also now seeing the cavalry of the elves marching its way over one of the units unfortunately being hit by the knights of the mark the elven cavalry will do fine in this engagement rohan kind of needs a bit of a buff with regards to his cavalry the cavalry is good, but it's not, like, exceptional. And it really does need to be, like, kind of put up a nut. Uh, that's for sure. The Noldrim Rangers continuing to harass and just cause issues. And the rest of the cavalry able to find its way around. And this is one of the strengths of bringing in the old cavalry army. Uh, is that you can really kind of commit in here and win these cavalry engagements super effectively. And then wrap your way around. So I'll be seeing... Oh, actually, a charge right here. Not a bad charge by the elves. This is heavy guards of a hall, which are a very sturdy spear infantry. 
So they'll be able to take their pound of flesh. You can see not as many of them to get knocked down. They were able to brace quite effectively. And only losing 16 men for killing a large amount of these horses. Pretty decent. Uh, but the Noldrian archers are firing in in full force. But realistically, this is not the environment that the elves would like to be in. These, sh these trees are blocking a lot of the incoming fire. And they're going to have to commit their way in, just looking to break them as the other unit is struggling. Noldrian horses down to 25 elves now on that flank. Over in the main fight, we are now finally seeing Dunland in incoming. However, oh my god, so many of these Dunland horsemen have been surrounded by Mordor. How did this happen? You need to make sure you keep mobile, but I guess the trees are really providing good cover. Because not only does it prevent missiles from doing like working as effectively as they can, it also makes it so that your units can stay hidden until you're way closer. And the fact that they have a unit of halberds in this fight as well is just catastrophic for Donland. Not able to really commit their forces. Luckily, they are going to be able to get a lot of their infantry in uh, to this fight, but it's whether or not their units will be able to sustain that fight long enough. And you're also seeing infantry as well somehow managing to sneak their way through the Dwarven battle line and engage onto these crossbowmen, which is nice. We are getting a unit of the Erebor, uh, so the Erebor halberds here. Able to act as a little bit of a shield. And allowed to get them crossbows back into safety. Uh, but yeah, with the support coming in, it's a little bit scary. I say that as well. We're also getting Dwarven Warriors charge out. Able to break the Tribunal Hunters very effectively. And more and more soldiers are just throwing their way forward. So this Elven Assault on this right flank have just not been able to really, you know, kind of do as much as they would like. And there's still a lot of Uruk from in reserve. Granted, these aren't the most expensive, high-quality troops, but they're, they're still decent. They'll do their job at holding the line. And the fact that there's still, what, like four units left here is not bad whatsoever. I would always take reserves in a battle like this if I can take them. And even with more soldiers being brought into this fight, I mean, actually, I say that a lot of uh, reinforcements have been brought up here. So some of the VI clash in once again. They need to be pretty careful there. And also we have the General Cavalry here. Committing in there by Dunland, engaging the rest of the units. And also following through on that charge. Not bad whatsoever. Arch is duking it out with the Erebor Crossbowmen. At this point, you're just really better off leaving them and focusing on the infantry fight. As we're getting the Dwarfs fully committing in here. Surrounding the Tribesmen. And this unit being surrounded is pretty crucial and detrimental to their battle plan because once this flank is ruined, it's going to be a very, very shaky situation. The elves are trying their best on this flank and they have been able to kind of surround with their cavalry and, and deal with what horse that Rohan does have left. So they are going to win these fights, but it's how much they have left to really kind of throw in and push forward because a lot of their main staying infantry lines have all been broken. The elves are down to their last couple hundred soldiers. Uh, 27 men left in this unit of elven units. And again, they'll be able to, to do decently against the, the Uruk Throng, but their numbers will start to play in. And these units are exhausted. You can see that on the unit card. They do not have much left in the tank and uh, even trying to pull back as best as they can. There's another unit of Gondorian swords here committed over on this flank. But the reserves are flying in now. Another unit committed in there, able to kind of really pin in the men of Gondor very, very effectively. The main battle line for the dwarfs as well. I mean, take a nice little overview of this battlefield. You can see that there are still a lot of red counters on this field. A lot of the cavalry, which could again be so crucial that the horse is charging in once again, able to rip through this thin line. But every time they commit into a fight like this, they do end up losing three, four horses. And then that makes the next charge weaker. And then the next charge, they lose three, four horses. But it's whether or not they can get their money's worth out of these cavalry. Two charges going off, really trying to focus down the, uh, the, the weaker units because, again, you can cause some big army attrition losses here. 
The Nordrum ranges up to 350 kills, which is not bad. Again, keep in mind, though, it is on Orc, Rabble, and other units, so they're kind of, like, padding their KDA right now, killing Christmas noobs or something. But every kill is still huge, and able to, like, if they can really kind of commit down, they might be able to cause a mass route in Mordor. Numbers-wise, on the battlefield as well, we can see that the forces of Rohan and the Orcs still have 3,600. They're outnumbering Gondor and the Elves by 1,500 men, which is kind of crazy, and that will add up. Looks like we've got an absolute massive mosh pit of infantry here. Orcs and Dunlans really fighting. Now, this is where you want to bring your cavalry if they can break their way through, I think. Throwing this cavalry around here and then just charging into the back, maybe trying to kill the champion region's cavalry would be huge. But the dwarves are tracking aback. And we're going to try and get them, their men into this fight as quickly as possible uh, because these halberds will do plenty of work. Dunlan turning over, but you know, finding a pretty sturdy wall of halberds waiting for them. And from the front, these halberds are basically like a brick wall. You're not going to find your way through and you're going to take heavy casualties trying. But try nonetheless, they will. Another unit reinforcing as well. Going up against some of the Blood Reavers that Dunland have. Equipped with much of Isengard's technology. And Tomb Wardens now, the heavy infantry of the Dwarfs reinforcing. Now that is scary, if I do say so. The Elven Cavalry is still causing a ruckus in the back lines. Another charge coming in momentarily. Oh god, why did it have to... It always does that. Whenever I zoom in for an epic shot, it always, uh, it always ends up on uh, it being, not being as epic. I'm still surprised there's still like a couple units out here. A unit of the Philian Rangers fighting, but even they will have their day. They're, they're not long for this world, that's for sure. And yeah, it just really comes down to this, a, a big mosh pit, which I think, you know, even though we do have the Uruk from breaking and the cavalry still able to, to come in and cause this harassment, the cavalry is dwindling uh, in numbers and they'll be l less and less effective. The dwarves have been able to really bring a lot of their forces back. More spearmen coming over. These javelins able to get one or two more volleys off, but again, the Uruk from have now made their way into these very lightly armored tribes. And, oh, they're actually able to rout them. However, unfortunately, the, uh, the dwarves will be enough of a, uh, of a match of them. And they'll, they'll slaughter these guys immediately breaking. I mean, I think I would run the other way. And now it's really up to how well this cavalry can do. Bands of Power is looking abysmal. I can't believe there's still six minutes left in this battle as we get a big mass route there. The rest of Dunland's really breaking. I assume it's just all the cavalry roaming around and causing issues and just charging in and just racking up kills. Imagine if this cavalry managed to turn it around. I assume they're just going to go around killing and uh, routing whatever they can. Are they going after the, the other routing units to try and pad their stats? I mean, honestly, they've done pretty good. This cavalry just wasn't able to fully commit and play their game. And the attackers did a great job. They, they focused in on that big blob of infantry. And the skirmish cavalry really couldn't do its thing. Again, the cavalry was, uh, was you know, in a, in a bad battle matchup anyway. Because there's a lot of trees around that minimizes the missile fire. What you really need is, like, big battlefields to take advantage of this. And, yeah, right now, the defenders will just kind of form this box, bring their missiles in, and start counter-firing. Which is one of the reasons why horse archers are so hard to bring to bear against your opponents in a lot of these battles. is just because uh, just because the enemy can just counter-fire. Horse archers have that mobility to move from flank to flank, but normally you have enough archers to kind of cover that position. And you really have to utilize these guys effectively. Um, and just kind of focus down specific units, you know, use that mobility. And it takes a cunning eye to, to really utilize these guys. But I think, you know, if you put enough effort and time into them, you really can make a filthy, filthy horse archer line and really make them work in, like, in combination with the rest of your units. That's going to be it. A pretty big slaughter there in the end. There's still plenty left. How many soldiers surviving? Over 2,000 surviving. So losing three quarters of their force, but still 
a victory nonetheless. I'm interested to see how many kills all that cavalry got in the end. Yeah, not bad. Like 400 kills on some units. Again, killing rabbles. So it's hard to tell exactly how much money uh, they made back. The elves of the Woodland Realm doing good as you expect. Their MG are fine. Gondorians. Eh, again, affiliate rangers. 200 kills on that one, which is not bad. Dunland. 300 kills on their general is nice for sure. So if you guys want to go ahead and see more Rise of Mordor on the channel, make sure you drop a like and a comment down below. And I'll see you guys in the next one.